welcome everyone to West Jamaica Conference. That's right, headquarters here on the Mount of Salem in the friendly city of Montego Bay and the breathtaking island of Jamaica. Jamaica. That's right. If you're just joining us, it's all about online evangelistic series. Yes, yes it is Nature Speaks, Hope for Tomorrow, online evangelistic series. And trust me, we are so much elated to welcome you here on this platform. I'm Alan Green. And I am Kamara Dixon. So, Kamara. <laughs> yes, Alan. <laughs> today is Emancipation Day. Happy Emancipation wow. Day, Jamaica. There we go. One, two, three, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. But you would understand the one, two, three, right? All right. There <laughs> we go. Well, Kamara, it's your privilege to welcome all our viewers, all our worshippers on the various social media platforms. Say something Certainly. nice to these people. Of course. Something nice like, we just love you. And we're asking you to share the link to save a life. Very and so we want like to welcome that. you on Facebook, on WCCN, YouTube, and perhaps, Alan, we might be on Instagram. That's Whatever right. platform you're on, of course, Bless TV, we thank you for joining us this evening. And we ask that you pray for the initiative here. And while you're praying, subscribe to our channel. And remember to hit that notification bell so that whenever anything starts here, you are automatically notified. Right, That's Alan? Right. There we go. Actually, three weeks. This is our third week. The Nature Speaks uh, Hope for Tomorrow online evangelistic series. And trust me, time flies. Yesterday's sermon, that divine, oh, our man. sermon, the palm tree. Jeez. I love it. Yes. Well, brace for something awesome tonight because yes. I tell you, the preacher is all in his elements. Of course, Alan. And we can also expect, expect to hear more from Dr. Street t tonight with our health feature. And of course, we cannot have this event without praise and worship, right. without prayer. And so we're asking you to assist us as well to pray at the specified times at 6 a.m., 12 noon, and 6 p.m. each day. Right. Already we see the effects of your prayer. Because the Holy Spirit, Alan, as yes. Denise would say, is in this place. That's right, <laughs> in the house. Yes. Well, before we go over to the praise team, I'm going to invite you to join with us as we pray. Amen. Father in heaven, we truly want to thank you so much for your amazing love and your amazing grace towards us. Once again, Lord, we commit ourselves and we commit this program into your care. Have your way with us, O oh Lord, and glorify yourself as you've been doing over and over again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good evening to each and every one. Happy emancipation to our Jamaicans out there, of course, here in the island itself and across the diaspora. Welcome to another Sunday evening meeting of Nature Speaks. Of course, we are here just to worship the Lord with you and we're about to go into our song service. We do hope that you can worship and sing along with us. Our first song this evening, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save me. We believe sing along with us. Hey.
to our door to, to show the way, way. from the earth to the cross. Oh, my dad, to pay. My dad, to pay. Oh, yeah. From the cross to the grave. Oh, yeah. lift his name on high, which is why we can sing at this point, blessing and honor, glory and power be unto the ancient of days. Of course, there is no other God like him. So that's why we can sing this song joyously. Here we go. As we sing our theme song, of course, we speak to the nature of God based on how He cares for us. You bring life to the barren places, light to the darkest spaces, only because you're God, and that's your nature. From everywhere, help us sing. Your nature, you bring joy 
everyone at this time wherever you are to join us assume an attitude of reverence even as we seek the Lord in prayer let us pray great Jehovah God of your people Israel we worship you we praise and give you thanks this evening for the numerous blessings that you have lavished upon us your people you have been an extremely good God, yes, O oh Lord. Over the years, again and again, we have amassed a massive depth of sin, but we thank you for Jesus who died for us on the cross of Calvary because even as we come worshiping you this evening, we come with the confidence that Calvary covers all of our sins. And so, Lord, as we come to you, we come commending ourselves into your hands. We ask for your presence. We ask uh, that you will come by this place and worship with us this evening. We thank you for the privilege whereby we are able once again to share in this prophetic event, even the preaching of the everlasting gospel. May the faith of your people increase. For you have declared in your word that faith cometh by hearing and uh, hearing by the word of God. As we follow on the various uh, platforms, oh God, I ask that in a marked way there will be a mighty moving 
power of your Holy Ghost. Uh, we ask uh, that you will visit your people, yes, Lord. Uh, so many have been afflicted uh, by the general consequences of sin which exist today. Some uh, are sick and in the hospital. Many have lost loved ones. Many are suffering from the coronavirus. Many have lost jobs. Many are suffering financially. Many, oh Lord, are requesting prayers for their loved ones. But we come this evening with the confidence that there is a power in prayer. There is power when we touch your throne, oh God Almighty. So we pray now as we pray for all these maladies by which we are afflicted in a very special way. We pray, Lord, for the sin problem. Yes, here in Jamaica, we celebrate emancipation, but we know that there is no greater emancipation than emancipation from sin. So may we, like Paul today, truly experience the fact that the only way to be truly emancipated, to be truly free, is to be a prisoner and a captive of the Lord Jesus Christ. Anoint your man's servant, Pastor Williams, we pray. Grant him no ordinary power. Grant him nothing less than the old time Pentecostal power so that as he presents, hearts will be touched as your spirit move through a WCCN, move through a Facebook and YouTube and all the platforms. May somebody cry out this evening and surrender their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. So bless now the proceedings and at the end of it all, may your name and your name alone alone be honored and glorified. May somebody make that decision at last to be baptized in the name of Jesus. Thank you Lord for hearing. Thank you for answering our prayers for we ask it in the saving and mighty name of Jesus and let your people everywhere say amen and amen. Praise his name, praise his name. Well, once again, everyone, it is our time to, to join into the worship experience as we praise the Lord in giving. You know, the psalmist reminds us that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The word and they that dwell there, that's you and I. And so it is our opportunity now, it is our pleasure to worship God in giving. And no matter who we are or where we are, we can express thanks and gratitude to God for his marvelous work. We got rain here today. Uh, the sun is still shining. We are having fresh air. Man, God is good. And so wherever you are, uh, if be it in a local church, you can give your special offering. Those who are in the auditorium, you can get, give your offering. Those who are online, yes, yes, the giving platform is there. It is on the screen. Please contribute to the work of God. The preaching of the gospel is going forward in a mighty way. And you have this awesome opportunity to play your part. May the Lord bless you as you, as you give and as we here give likewise. Shall we pray, loving Lord? We thank you for your many blessings. We cannot count your bountiful blessings. New every morning is your love. Yes, Lord, great is your faithfulness. We pray that you would bless every person that gives a special offering this night. But we ask, oh God, that above all things, that our hearts will be given over to you completely. Bless and keep us now as we worship you in giving. For we ask these mercies in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, here we go once again, viewers. This evangelistic series Kamara is so well designed it that is. it speaks also of the physical component ah, of the man and yes. talking about the physical we're going to be zooming in on your health so right about now Kamara Dixon will be sharing with us the profile of this professional person who will be engaging us in these health tips. All right, Alan, thank you so very much and he's no stranger to us his name is Douglas Street 
is he's a general practitioner and he works at the Trident Medical Complex in Montego Bay. He's also a Seventh-day Adventist at the Glendevon Church. He is the host of Health and Healing, which is aired on More FM 91.7 at 5.30 p.m. on Wednesdays. He is also the author of two published books, Beyond the Prescription, Reducing Inflammation, which gives guidance on how to prevent and beat illnesses naturally, and The Blessing of Suffering, wow. which gives guidance on healing with suffering. And so, Alan, right yes. now we make way for Dr. Street to take us down the health street. That's right. Take notes and learn well. We transition now to Dr. Street. Good evening. Hope you've been enjoying the program so far. My name is Dr. Street, Dr. Douglas Street, and I want to speak to you today about rest. What we really want to do is to give you a, a, a prelude for the upcoming I Want to Live Healthy program. So we're going to be looking at different aspects of the, of, the, of the practices of the health laws that we should be doing in order to, uh, to ensure that we, we live healthy. So this evening we're going to be looking at rest. Now, of course, you know, we all need rest, but some of us think it is somewhat dispensable. But rest is a very, very important part of, of our daily practices and it's something that we should not ignore at all. Um, now, first thing is, how much sleep should we get? Sleep is something that it should be a daily part of our routine. And of course, um, depending on the stage of life that, um, that you're at, the amount of sleep that you need will be, will be much different. For example, if you are an adult, then the amount of sleep that you should, should be getting is about uh, seven to, to nine hours each day, as opposed to uh, a teenager. A teenager needs, needs about um, eight to 10 hours of sleep each night. And a school age child, you know, that would be about um, you know, primary school age, should get about 10 to 13 hours of sleep per day, including naps. A toddlers should get uh, between 11 to 14 hours of sleep and babies about 12 to 16 hours. Now, why is it so important to ensure that we get enough rest? Now, rest helps us to avoid many problems. First of all, it helps us to avoid accidents. Many persons um, who have to, especially those who, who drive back and forth from work or their they're driving may, may, may be a part of their work. If you don't get enough rest, then you may, be, you may get tired and you may fall asleep. Or even on the job, you may have accidents that you can avoid if you had gotten enough rest. Persons who don't get enough rest also are more likely to have chronic illnesses, things like diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, and even cancer. You may increase your risk of having that. Getting enough sleep also in, in improves your mood and communication. Sometimes when, when persons don't get enough sleep, they get what we call grumpy. They, their mood may drop, they may, they may get anxious, they may get um, you know, snappy. So when you're getting enough sleep, then it's less likely for you to, to, to be like that. So, of course, sleeping actually can help to improve your, your relationships. Of course, you, you can also concentrate better if you get enough sleep. So this would help you to be more productive, both in terms of your school and at work. So sleeping is very, very important. Now, what really happens during sleep? You, we have different phases of sleep, right? And, um, and your body has to go through these phases each night. And what happens during sleep is that your body goes through a repair process. So during the day, your body goes through wear and tear. And during sleep, you, your, your body is repairing. It is somewhat resting, but it's really doing a lot of repairs, especially the, the brain. The brain goes into a repair mode when you are sleeping. And that's why it's very important to ensure that you, that you get enough sleep. Now, what, what's, a good, what's a good time for you to, to go to bed? Research has shown that the best time to go to bed is actually at 9.30, right? Um, so if you're getting seven hours of sleep, then you end up um, sleeping from about 9.30 to about 5.30. And as traditional wisdom goes, early to bed makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. And this has actually been shown to, to be true. Now, why should you go, go to bed so relatively early? Well, this is because your body has a cycle. So um, it has a hormonal cycle, and... 
you're, so it goes into a, a repair mode at a certain time of the night. Now, if you're not sleeping at that time, then you'll miss out on the benefit. There's a hormone in the body called melatonin, and the, 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 the greatest amount is produced at about 11 p.m. So you should be sleeping during that time to allow your body to go through the necessary repairs. Now, um, so you should try to avoid doing things that are going to interfere with the quality of sleep that, that you have. What are some of the things that may interfere with your sleep? Some person may feel stressed. They may have things on their mind. They may have work to do. Some persons are working at the time when they're supposed to be sleeping. Some persons are having pain. Some health conditions may also interfere with sleeping. And medications sometimes can interfere with sleep. For example, you know, certain medications for depression can cause that. Caffeine is a drug that is in some drinks that we use that may, that may for example, coffee and, and tea and, and certain um, caffeinated beverages. These can interfere with sleep as well, and you also have sleep disorders. Now, what are some of the things that you can do to ensure that you, you, you get enough sleep? You should, of course, try to, um, try to avoid doing certain things during the day and certain things at night. So during the day, you, you don't want to be, um, I said, drinking too much coffee, so avoid, avoid caffeine, as, you know, because that may continue to stimulate you. Also, um, you, you may want to um, get some morning exercise. It has been shown that when you go out in the early morning exercise, you, you, you tend to get a better quality sleep at night because getting that kind of lighting during the early morning uh, it prepares your body for, for sleep during night. It sets your body into a certain, you know, pathway that takes you I into, in into sleep at night. It's also important to have a quiet, dark place to, to, to sleep. So, so ensure that you, the environment that you're in is conducive to, to sleep as well. Also, try and have a regular sleep schedule. So make sure that you go to bed at a certain time. I said preferably, this should be between 9.30 to 10 o'clock, right? Also avoid having stimulating um, activities to do. For example, some people may be working up to the, the time when they are, they are sleeping, and this may, may stimulate them so much that they, when it's time come for them to, to sleep, they can't sleep. You should try and have some relaxation techniques. If you find that you have a difficulty falling asleep, then you should try to do some re relaxation exercises. For example, you may take some deep breathing exercises, and, and this may help to prepare your body for sleep. Also, um, you want to avoid eating late. Now, it's best to avoid eating after 6 p.m. Now, some person may get home later than that. And you should really try and finish your, your eating um, before 6. Because if you, if you have food in the system, it may interfere with sleep. Your phone, media. If you're using media close to the time when it's supposed to be sleeping, then this may interfere with the sleep as well. And it's best avoid them. And it's also best to avoid working in your bedroom. If you, if you get your body... Um, you know, get your mind used to working in the bedroom, then you, you, you may get somewhat confused and then you may have a, have a problem um, resting when, when the time comes. It's also important not only to rest at night, but you should get at least a day's um, rest um, for, for, for the week. And also you should take some, some vacation time. Now, it's very important, as I said, to make sure that you get enough sleep. Sleep is not just important in terms of maintaining your health, but it also helps you to, to, to get better when you have chronic illnesses. So make sure that you get enough sleep, because if you don't get, get your break, then you may get a breakdown. And for those of us who want to get more information about, uh, about quality sleep, you can, you can check out the book I have on Amazon. It's called, um, it's, it's called Beyond beyond the, the prescription, reducing inflammation. You can get it on Amazon, and it can give you more information about getting quality sleep and also improving your health overall. Thank you very much for listening, and you have a wonderful rest of the evening. Well, what do you know? It is time once again for the man of God to deliver God's message. Man, yesterday, yesterday, we, we, we recognized that we are to be palm trees for the Lord. Uh, we, we were reminded in the afternoon that, that, that hey, you, we have to be aware of the beers. So, so, so uh, persons who have bald heads that were, were, were not to be uh, 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 troubled too much. And so, beloved friends, tonight, once again, God's man servant is ready, is prepared, and is here to deliver 
God's message for this time. Pastor Donovan F. Williams, Executive Secretary of the West Jamaica Conference, will deliver God's message. Hear ye, God's man servant, after this special song to get our minds in the right place. God bless you.
Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another evening of Nature Speaks Hope for Tomorrow online evangelistic series. I'm so happy and so delighted to greet you all and to welcome you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Whether you are joining us via WCCN, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Bless TV, whatever social media platform you are joining us on or from, I want to welcome you in a very special way. I want to say send special greetings to all those who are viewing from the Hopewell Town Square. Uh, greet you well. I big you up, Hopewell. And there are many other such um, gatherings in town squares and in various communities. Just want to um, greet you well and welcome you to Nature Speaks Hope for Tomorrow. I want to encourage you uh, to share the link, also to subscribe. It, it, is, it is very important uh, because of the uncertainty with the curfew time, uh, we want you to um, subscribe so whenever the program begins, you will be directly notified of the beginning of the program. So please, everybody, make it a special um, responsibility to go and subscribe to our program. I want to see thousands of individuals throughout this week. It is the beginning of the third week. I want to see thousands of individuals subscribing and sharing the link. It is free. It is easy to um, subscribe because we want to take the message of the gospel to everyone and COVID-19 will not prevent the sharing of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I invite you to share the link. I invite you to subscribe as we carry out this great program. God has been tremendously good to us and every evening at Nature Speaks we sing of the goodness of the Lord. So wherever you are, join us now as we lift up the name of the Lord, as we sing of his goodness and we sing of his love.
Let's bow our heads as we pray. Oh, Father God in heaven, we have come to hear from you. We have come to study your word. One more evening, please anoint your servant. Please anoint your word. Anoint your viewers wherever they are. And through the power of the Holy Spirit and the spoken word, bring conviction, bring conversion, and bring transformation, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our subject this evening is divine institutions. No substitution. It is a powerful message and I will try my very best to see if I can get through the message this evening working with the time. If not, we pick it up on Tuesday night. But the truth of the matter is we go to the Garden of Eden as nature speaks to us. We go to the Garden of Eden and what better place for God to speak to us from than the perfect Garden of Eden. Nature in its perfection, nature in its beauty and glory cannot be surpassed. The Garden of Eden cannot be surpassed. And so, from the Garden of Eden, there are two institutions that were established in the Garden of Eden that the devil is on a vicious war path to destroy. Two institutions, hear me somebody, as the Garden of Eden speaks to us this evening. Two institutions. The first institution is the institution of marriage. Turn your Bibles to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 2. And I will read from verse 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Amen. Out of the ground, Lord God formed every beast of the field, every bird of the air, and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called each living creature, that was the name. That's the name. That was its name. So Adam gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam and he slept and he took out of his ribs one of took out one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place then the rib which he the Lord God had taken from man he made into a woman and he brought her to the man Listen what Adam said. And Adam said, This is no bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called what? Woman. Because she was taken out of the man. So God instituted marriage in the Garden of Eden. And marriage was between a man and a woman, a male and a female. 
But the devil is out to destroy the institution of marriage. But I want to declare the word of the Lord that marriage remains as God instituted it. It is between a man and a woman, a male and a female. But the devil has sought to destroy marriage. What are the ways in which the devil is determined to destroy this institution? The devil has, and, and, and friends, if you follow Hollywood today, you will have the wrong concept of marriage. But I'm, I'm happy that Hollywood is not our manual for marriage. The Bible is our manual for marriage. Somebody needs to say amen. Marriage. And so the devil instituted things to destroy marriage. I want us to understand that it was never the intention of God for man to be involved in sex outside of marriage. Sex outside of marriage is not according to God's plan. First Corinthians, first Corinthians chapter six, first Corinthians chapter six and verse 13. Food for the stomach and the stomach for food. But God destroy both it and them. No, the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. So God did not create the body for sexual immorality. God did not create marriage for sex to be taken place outside of marriage. And therefore, if that is so, fornication is wrong. If that is so, adultery is wrong. Exodus 20 and verse 14 tells us that we should not commit adultery. So a man needs to be sexually involved with his wife. That is God's blueprint. That is God's plan. And as a matter of fact, friends, let me just say this. That if you are living in a relationship and you are not married, the honorable thing to do is to get married. I have a problem with individuals living for years together. A man and a woman living for years together have children. And then the man said, I don't ready to marry to her as yet. If you're not ready to marry to her, then something is wrong. But marriage is an honorable thing. And so, if you're living together, do the honorable thing. Get married. Be legal. And follow God's blueprint. Another way in which the devil seeks to destroy the institution of marriage is through homosexuality. God did not create Adam and Steve. 
God created Adam and Eve. That's the blueprint. That's the blueprint. From the Garden of Eden, nature is saying to us that anything else than a man and a woman is an abomination to God. Second Timothy chapter 3, the second book of Timothy chapter 3, I read from verse 1. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiven, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitor, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasures rather than the lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And from such people turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into the household and make captains of gullible women loaded down with sin, led away by vicious lust. Men without natural affection turning to the same sex. This is not according to God's design. Hear me, somebody. Nature is saying that marriage is between a man and a woman according to God's design. And the devil seeks to use um, bestiality to destroy marriage. People, individuals going to animals, individuals living with their pets, having sexual relationship with animals. It is it has gone even so far that they are people who are willing to marry to their pets. Mm. That's a distortion of the holy institution. And then we have incest. Incest. We have some fathers who molest their children. We have some Grandfathers who molest their grandchildren, uh, uh, they molest their granddaughters, they molest their grandsons, they molest boys, they molest girls. And we have today many children, some of them are grown up adults who are living with these scars, who are living with the pain of incest. Some of these individuals are on the verge of suicide. They are depressed all because of a family member who molested them sexually. Immorality. There are some individuals, both males and females, who are still carrying the scars of rape. They were raped. Some 
of these individuals are facing the impact of such social injustice. But I want to say to somebody, I want to say to a young lady, I want to say to a young man, I want to say to an adult who is carrying the scars of incest and rape, you don't have to be weighed down by the pain and shame. There is a God who loves you. There's a God who cares for you. There's a God who wants to intervene in your situation intervene in your circumstances and some of you probably were asked the question where was God when I was molested where was God when I was raped I wanted to know that God was right where he was when his, his son Jesus Christ died on Calvary. And one day he is going to put an end to sin and sorrow. Just trust God. Just hold on to him. Just believe in him. And one day sin and suffering will be no more and I say amen so the devil is on the path to destroy marriage but thanks be to God nature is saying there is no substitute there is no substitute for marriage marriage is according to God's design you cannot change and no matter what man seeks to do, marriage will remain as God instituted it. And as Seventh-day Adventists, we will not recant. We will not change because we have to follow thus sage the Lord. And I trust and hope that all of us will accept the institution of marriage as God's design. The second institution, which I hope to spend a little bit more time on, that there is no substitute for. And the Garden of Eden, nature in its perfection, nature in its beauty, nature is speaking to us that the Sabbath, the Sabbath, the Sabbath still remains. There remains a Sabbath. The second institution is the institution of the Sabbath. Turn your Bibles with me, everybody. The Bible is speaking this evening the bible is speaking all over west jamaica the bible is speaking all across the world because the devil is on a path to destroy the sabbath but our seventh day adventists we will let it be known far and wide remember the sabbath day to keep it holy the sabbath still remains turn your bibles genesis chapter 2 in genesis chapter 2 the heavens and the earth and all the house of them were finished and on the seventh day God ended his work which he had done and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he has made. 
and God blessed the seventh day, sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work, which God had created and made. And I say, Amen. God blessed the Sabbath. God sanctified the Sabbath. God set the Sabbath aside for special work, special use. And I say, Amen. Exodus chapter 20. Exodus. Genesis. Exodus. We know this passage, Seventh day Adventist, Exodus uh, chapter 20, and we read from verse 8 Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And this is the only commandment that says, Remember somebody. I was in a store shopping and somebody came up to me and said, Pastor, remind me, tell me of the two remembers in the Bible. And I said, remember the Sabbath day and remember Lot's wife. Two very important call for us to remember. Remember Lot's wife. And remember the Sabbath day. The two remembers in the Bible. Remember the Sabbath day. And remember Lot's wife. The Sabbath, God is saying, we should remember it. Don't forget it. The Sabbath is important. It was instituted in the Garden of Eden. But let me tell you, even as I hasten on, there are a number of individuals who are saying that the commandments of the Lord are done away with not because they have any problem with most of the commandments is because they have a problem with just one hear me somebody just one and the one is the sabbath the one is the one that calls us to worship but as god is the Sabbath will remain. As God is, the Sabbath will remain. The Sabbath is not designed by man. The Sabbath is designed by God. So let's get back to Exodus 20. Six days shalt thou labor. And do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your maidservant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is in your gate. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and the Lord hallowed it. There is no other day that the Lord has blessed and sanctified but the Sabbath. No other day. That he has blessed and sanctified. But the Sabbath day, uh, the Sabbath is a sign between God and his people. Exodus 20, verse 20. Exodus 20, 
verse 12 tells us that the Sabbath is a sign between God and his people. As a matter of fact, Jesus kept the Sabbath. Jesus kept the Sabbath. In Luke 4 and verse 16, Let's turn our Bibles. Let the Bible speak. Don't want you to say is Pastor William's word. The Bible must speak. Luke chapter 4 and verse 16. So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue when... He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. That was the custom of Jesus. Custom means is something that you do on a regular basis. It's something you do often. So Jesus went into the synagogue on no other day but the Sabbath. Somebody needs to know that if Jesus kept the Sabbath, Donovan Fitzgerald Williams must also keep the Sabbath. There is no substitute. As a matter of fact, the Sabbath does not belong to man. The Sabbath is God's day. It is the Lord's day. Turn your Bibles to Mark chapter 2. The Bible is speaking this evening. Mark chapter 2. And we read verse 27. And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for who? For man. And not man for the Sabbath. Verse 28, therefore the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. It is His day. He is Lord of the Sabbath. And if He is Lord of the Sabbath, then it is His day. It is the Lord's day. Belongs to Him, not to man. It is the Lord's day. Day. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. So, if you remember, when John, I think it is Revelation 1 and verse 9 or verse 10, when John said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. It means that John was in the Spirit on the Sabbath day. Uh, that was Revelation uh, chapter 1 and verse 10. John was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Mark tells us that the Lord's day is the Sabbath. So therefore, if we, if we use line upon line, John was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Now I want you to know, friends, that not only Jesus kept the Sabbath, but the, the Sabbath was kept by both Jews and Gentiles. As a, there are some people who say, oh, watch this now, that the Sabbath was for the Jews. But hear me. Before there was a Jew, there was the Sabbath. And nature te tells us that, that the Sabbath started in the Garden of Eden before there was a Jew. And so the Sabbath is not for Jews only. For Jews and Gentiles, Acts chapter 13. The Bible speaks, Acts chapter 13 and verse 42. Acts 13, 
42. So when the Jews went out of the synagogue, the Gentiles beg that these words might be preached to them the next when? The next Sabbath. So Gentiles worship on Sabbath. Jews worship on Sabbath. The Apostle Paul also worship on Sabbath. The disciples worship on Sabbath. So if Jesus kept the Sabbath, if the disciples kept the Sabbath, then God's people must continue to keep the Sabbath holy. Friends, God will not change. God will not change for any man. Let's reason now. Let us reason now. Do we have a problem with the institution of marriage? Do we believe that the marriage institution is done away with? If you believe that the marriage institution is still holy and still binding, type in the chat, yes. And if all of us say that marriage is still binding, why is it that we are saying that the Sabbath is no longer binding? Why is it that we want to get rid of the Sabbath? That was created in the Garden of Eden just like marriage. Friends, it is time for us to obey, thus saith the Lord. And there are many, many of us who are watching this program. Many of us, deep down in our hearts, our consciences, are saying it is true the sabbath is true so i challenge you i challenge you i point at you sir i point at you lady stand up and obey the truth of God's word. You know within your heart that the Sabbath is true. Stand up in obedience. Don't stifle your conscience anymore. Don't fight against the truth of God's word. Because you know that the Sabbath is true. But let's reason even a little bit more. Do you have a problem with the moon? Do you have a problem with the moon? Do you want to get rid of the moon? Hey, let me come home even more. For nature is speaking. Do you want to get rid of the sun? Do you have a problem with the sun? Are you praying that God will get rid of the sun and God will allow the sun not to rise again? If that were so, then all of us would be dead. And watch this now. Watch this. If we don't want to get rid of the sun, Oh, nature is speaking. If you don't want to get rid of the sun or you don't want to get rid of the moon, why is it that you want to get rid of the Sabbath? Because these are important. The sun rules the day. The moon regulates the month and the Sabbath regulates the week. So, hear me somebody. As the Holy Ghost talk with you, your conscience is clear. 
If you don't want to get rid of the moon that regulates the month, and you don't want to get rid of the sun that regulates the day, why is it you want to get rid of the moon of, of, of the Sabbath that regulates the week? The Sabbath is as important to nature and to the smooth operation of life as the sun, the moon, thereof. But as I close, as I close, oh, I, I, I have to go a little bit more because there's some individuals who ask the question, Pastor, then which day is the Sabbath? Which day is the Sabbath? Which day, Pastor Williams, is the Sabbath? And it is very easy to be proven from the Word of God. Turn your Bibles to St. Luke chapter 23. St. Luke 23, and I will let the Bible speak. St. Luke chapter 23. We pick up from verse 50 and then we go over to 24 and verse 1. Prove that Saturday is a Sabbath. Now behold, there was a man named Joseph, a council member, a good and just man. He had not consented to their decision and deed. He was from Amathia, a city of the Jews, who himself was also waiting for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in linen, laid it in a tomb, that was hewed out of the rock where no one had ever laid before. That day, what day? That day was a preparation and the Sabbath was drawing near. So the day that Joseph took the body down was a preparation day and the Sabbath was drawing near and the women who came with him from Galilee followed after and they observed the tomb and how his body was laid so the same day the ladies followed and saw how the body was laid then they return and prepare spices, fragments, and fragrant oils. And they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. So the next day they rested according to the commandment, rested on the Sabbath. Watch this now. Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing, in, bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb early the morning. So let's put this into perspective which day and it is known right across Christendom that the day that Jesus was crucified was Friday it is accepted they call it Good Friday don't know what was good about it Good Friday and the Bible says that it was the preparation day for the Sabbath. 
And the women rested on the Sabbath. And then the first day of the week, they went to the tomb. And everyone in Christendom knows that the first day of the week, they, they, they even call it Palm Sunday. The first day of the week was Sunday. Is Sunday. And that first day, Jesus rose from the grave. So let's logically reason. If he was placed in the tomb on the preparation day, and he rose on the first day of the week. Which day comes between Friday preparation day and Sunday resurrection day? It must be Saturday the Sabbath. Cannot be otherwise. And so I'm saying to you, don't stifle your conscience. Saturday is the Sabbath of the Lord. And, 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 and the Sabbath remains. Because if you get rid of the Sabbath, you have to get rid of the sun. And you have to get rid of the moon. Because the moon regulates the month. The sun regulates the, the day. And the Sabbath regulates the week. That's why in Isaiah, that's why I love Isaiah chapter 66. That's why I'm holding to Isaiah chapter 66. And I pick up from verse 22. For as the new heavens and the new earth which I make shall remain before me, says the Lord. So shall your descendants and your name remain. And it shall come to pass. Watch this now. From one Sabbath to another. From one new moon to another. Shall all flesh go up to worship. I told you about the sun. I told you about the moon. And what this is saying is that every week and every month we will go up to worship Jehovah God on his holy Sabbath day. So in the earth made new, which day will we worship on? In the earth made new, which day will we worship? We will worship God every week on his holy Sabbath day. And every month on his holy Sabbath day. And there's too. I close this evening with a call from Isaiah. In Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58. Verse 12. Those from among you shall build the old waste places you shall raise up the foundations of many generations you shall be called the repairer of the breach and the restorer of the streets to dwell in if you turn your foot from the sabbath if you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord honorable, and shall honor him, not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasures, nor speaking your own words, then you shall delight yourself in the Lord. And I will cause you to ride on the high places, on the high hills of the earth. And I will feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father. And I say amen. Saints of the living God, 
this evening we have established as nature speaks to us from the garden of eden that there are two divine institutions that the devil is trying to find substitution but there is no substitution marriage remains a holy institution by god the sabbath remains a holy institution by god and i pray that those of us who have been going contrary to the word of god that we will stand in obedience those who are worshiping contrary uh, isaiah says if you call the sabbath a delight i will make you ride on the high hills and i will feed you with the heritage of jacob your father i will prosper you if you obey my sabbath will cause you to ride on the high places and those who have are trampling and making light the institution of marriage I ask you this evening stand up and be counted stand up and respect the institution of marriage and if you need to do what is honorable in the sight of God, get married. And by the way, it doesn't have to cost you anything much to get married. A Seventh-day Adventist pastor who is a marriage officer will counsel you and will marry you free of cost. If you want to do what is right, where marriage is concerned, you can do it even without much cost to you. And if you want to do what is right where the Sabbath is concerned, do it. Because it's better to please God than man. May God so bless you that this evening, you will stand up for what is right. Stand up and be counted. And as the song is being done, as the appeal song is sung, please go to the decision card online. Sign up your decision card. You will see the link for our decision cards on your screen. Go, make your decision. Contact the nearest Seventh-day Adventist pastor. Contact your leader. Contact an elder. Call us here at headquarters and we will work with you as you are determined to obey God's truth, as you are determined to obey the Sabbath. And I also ask that if you are living with a significant one, if you are living in a relationship and you are not yet married, do what is honorable in the sight of God. The devil doesn't want you to do it, but stand up for these two holy institutions, which there is no substitution. Stand up for marriage and stand up for the Sabbath. And make your decision for eternal life in Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.
loving Father, we are just so grateful for another word this evening. Loving God, you have used your man's servant to remind us that you are still a mighty God. You send us your reminder every month, every week, every day that you are an awesome and a loving God. Oh, gracious God, we ask now that you will cause somebody to trust and obey you. Oh, loving God, I pray that somebody will, will choose to walk in the path of righteousness. Somebody, God, even now, they are still halting between two opinions. Even right now, God, somebody is unsure if they ought to do as your word have just commanded them to do. And so I pray now, Lord, that you will move upon somebody even now. May they trust you. May they know that they can depend on you. May they know that just as you send your son every day to shine, Lord, you will still provide for them. I pray, oh God, that you will help somebody to know that even right now they can choose to keep your commandments, to keep your holy Sabbath day. Oh, gracious God, we pray that somebody, even right now, who is still in that relationship, not yet saved, not yet baptized, not yet married, we pray, God in heaven, that you will give them the strength and the wisdom to stand up and to choose you and to make that right decision. Loving Father, we pray for that sister who she has just signed that card, that brother who have just indicated his decision to be baptized. We ask even now, O oh God, that you will dispatch from heaven an additional angel to be a guide over them. I pray, O oh Holy Spirit, that you'll reinforce your hold upon that heart. And may that life be turned over to Jesus Christ as a result of your word this evening. Thank you, God, for what you have done. And we pray that you'll continue to bless your man's servant. And Father, according to your will, may you take charge, take over, do something remarkable to somebody who will choose to obey you today. We pray and ask all these mercies in the wonderful name of Jesus. Let God's people say, Amen and Amen. Wow. Alan. What a word. I, can I tell you? Mercy. Mm. Divine institutions. No substitution. We praise the Lord for I'm that you. awesome, awesome yes, word tonight. Yes, yes. We trust that you've been blessed. I have been blessed, Alan. Well, I've been blessed myself. Mm. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Indeed. And, yes. And as we wrap this up, Alan, we hope that you would have shared that link. That's so right. So others would have benefited from what took place here tonight. That's right. And so we want to thank you so much. You who watched us on YouTube, yes. Facebook, yes. WCCN, and Bless TV, we thank you for watching. That's it. And Alan, That's it. we wrap it up here. That's it. So on behalf of the entire production team yes. here at West Jamaica Conference... <laughs> I'm Alan Green. And I'm Kamara Dixon. Saying, stay emancipated in Christ. That's it. <laughs> all right. And thank you all. See you again on Tuesday. Tuesday. Because tomorrow evening is rest, rest night. night. Remember that. That's Tuesday, right. stay safe. Bye.